it was the sheer quirkiness of Patrick that really invited people to, to want to watch him. Well, the tides, as you know, due to the influence of the sun and the moon. And when they pull together, as they're doing at the present moment, uh, the pull is added, you see, and we get high tides. Granted that the forces are enormous, just how big are they? It's absolutely tremendous. There's no doubt at all of it. Of course, the tides is the biggest natural force in the entire world. As a communicator, he was a supreme professional in that you could stand him up in front of a camera, ask him to talk with him without hesitation, deviation or repetition for two and a half minutes about some subjects. He could do this perfectly, convey a lot of information. He could do it even if it was some new discovery he'd only heard about a few hours ago. He was approached one morning by CNN uh, to do a broadcast for them. They said, look, the, the person we would you to interview has dropped out. Would you mind doing an interview for us? And he said, no, not at all, not at all. And they said, um, uh, how long will it take you to write the script? This script? He said, I don't work from script. But there is one world, apart from the Earth, where we can be quite certain... Patrick was a perfectionist, but the downside of that was if it all went wrong, he got terribly frustrated and started making... using somewhat uh, loose language, shall we say, which had to be edited after the recordings. Look at all that fantastic... Oh. I'm sorry. Blast and hell. When you watch yourself on television, uh, one always sees one's own faults very clearly. I yes. mean, mine, I know, I talk far too fast. I have to to get things in. I realise this perfectly well. But it's no good my trying to slow down. I mean, this is just me. Now, a lot of people have been writing into the sky at night asking various questions about astronomy. Well, of course, it is a fascinating sky. <laughs> a lot of people want to know why don't we put the sky at night on earlier in the summertime so the children could watch. Well, of course, we would put it on earlier. <laughs> Patrick's character and style lent itself to impersonation. Uh, uh, welcome to the Sky at Night. I'm a very bad impression of uh, Patrick. Moore. He was often being copied by many impressionists and co comedians, but I think it was the impersonation that Ronnie Barker did of him that was the one he loved. He really found that so funny. Patrick was always laughing about how the, the orrery which they gave to uh, the two Ronnies to do the sketch. Um, they apparently broke while doing the programmes. I'm sorry to have to inflict myself on you like this, but Patrick, Patrick couldn't be here tonight, so he asked me to step into his shoes. And why not? He's always wearing my suits. <laughs> so here I am, and he asked me to apologise to you for not being here, but he had to go and show his telescope to the local town's women's guild. <laughs> if, if they like it, they're going to knit him a cover for it. <laughs> I think that you can both be prepared to sit up and gasp in amazement because I happen to own the ultimate in telescopes, perfected after years of research. Can we see it, please? Of course you can. Yes. <laughs> you just cast your eyes over that? The ultimate in telescopes. Oh, yes. A very fine piece of equipment. Of course it is. I'll tell you mm. something, on a clear night with that, I can see the bottom of the bed. <laughs> Many people, Patrick, might label you as being a, an eccentric. Would you object to that? Uh, Not in the slightest. I'm sure it's perfectly true. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, it a, is it a condition that you approve of? Uh, yes, I think it probably is. It's awfully difficult to tell, you know. I mean, does one nut think another nut is a nut or not? It's an interesting psychological point. It's something they know for the psychiatrist to work out, and no one can be nuttier than they are. The eccentricity was something that he played on, but I think also it made, made him a very lovable character. Although having the monocle was something which he had, obviously, ever since he was a boy, um, it added to the air of interest about him. What about the real eccentrics, the flat earthers and the people like that? I mean, uh, how do you feel about I that? I have the very greatest sympathy for them, I may say. And after all, don't forget, many, many years ago, there was a man named Copernicus. And Copernicus said, the, uh, earth doesn't, the, uh, the sun does not go around the earth, the earth goes around the sun. And everyone said he was a crank. But of course, um, the earth does go around the sun, at least I think it does. What does that mean, actually? That means, how are all you? I am very pleased to see you this afternoon. How did you learn these languages? These languages have been a gift sent from me from the actual people. Patrick's talking to this man who's speaking Venusian to him, and Patrick is apparently taking it very seriously, and he's being very polite. But 
Patrick was always very dismissive of, of anything which isn't pure science. One of these small spheroids chased us through the cops, virtually, and we tried in turn to chase it, and it just went along there at a terrific pace. This was no bigger than a soup plate. It must have been a, a robot eye or a brain yes. beacon, yes. Like a thinking beacon, yes. which is sent down from the yes. car. I may well be missing something, I wonder. As well as astronomy, Patrick's other great passion was music. Patrick was a very good musician. You can see it is Sullivan playing, he's no fool, you know, piano playing as well. Talking about a man who probably could have made that his profession if he'd wanted to, but his passion for astronomy just overtook everything else. We talked about music quite a bit, we had some musical evenings and I always gave him our albums when they come out and he would always say well it's not exactly my cup of tea you know but I absolutely appreciate it you know and you know for choice he'd be listening to some of his own operas and classical pieces you know. Although he continued broadcasting in his late seventies arthritis forced Patrick to give up the things that he loved playing music and using his telescopes Patrick had this incredible fast mind that was racing and yet the body was slowly deteriorating and it was so sad for those of us who knew him well to see this person who was so full of incitement and vigour still in a body that was just decaying around him. As he got older he could find humour even, even when he was really poorly. You've seen <laughs> Halley's Comet both times. <laughs> When he was on, have I got news for you? He thought it was quite amusing to be the butt of a bit of humour. So where are we? Um, What's the, the, the other sun, right? What's happened to Uranus? Patrick is always seeing the joke before they do, effectively sort of caricaturing himself. Do you still need therapy? He even did it for me. He did um, adverts for the air guitar collections, which I do, where he actually plays air guitar, gets into it and does this, you know. No strings attached. I think it's really great quality. Patrick was awarded an OBE in 1968, a CBE in 1998, and in 2001 he was knighted for services to science and broadcasting. When he got the letter from the palace, he was just so thrilled. And then, of course, to get the BAFTA award as well in the same year, and presented by Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon. I mean, this was such a thrill for Patrick. Not only has this man met every single lunar astronaut, he will modestly tell you that he's also met both the first man in space and the first man to fly an airplane. I'm pleased to say that this special award is being presented to my good friend, Sir Patrick Moore. I must say, I feel really overwhelmed. There are so many people here who have done so much more than I have. After all, I have merely done some commenting. I did help, I suppose, in mapping the moon, but um, I have a sort of feeling that Buzz knows a bit more about the moon than I do. <laughs> all I can say is, I didn't think for one moment I deserve this award, but I am more than grateful. All I can say, therefore, is, Thank you very much indeed. It's been one of my great days of my life. Thank you. Although a much-loved figure, Patrick was not afraid of controversy. He was drawn to politics but never stood for Parliament, stating he would make a poor candidate because he always said exactly what he thought. He was incredibly patriotic. I'm sorry to say that he was also slightly anti-foreigner in some of the things he said but he was always somebody who was very passionately doing whatever he was doing. Patrick wanted to see three things during his life. Claiming things stuck. Each a once-in-a-lifetime astronomical event. Halley's Comet, the transit of Venus across the Sun, and a total solar eclipse from Britain. 
Patrick had seen eclipses from all over the world, from Yugoslavia and Siberia in the 60s, and at sea off the coast of Africa in 1973. Obviously, one trouble is the fact that the boat's going to be swaying around. How do you cope with that? Uh, we made a, a homemade device from wood, which uh, is based on the pivots, so it'll move in both directions. It looked to me as if you were balancing the camera on your teeth. No, strictly speaking, it was on my nose, quite hard on my nose, like this. As the time drew near, the light began to go down very rapidly. Within a few seconds, the whole ship was plunged into darkness. And there's the corona, and there's a billion prominence to the side of the sun. This is incredible, the best corona I think I've ever seen in my life. Well, that was a breathtaking sight. In 1927, before the age of television, England saw its last total solar eclipse. And now, we can bring you our first total solar eclipse from British soil. The day before the eclipse, it was a beautiful sunny day, and we had this wonderful program set up, and then the day of the eclipse, we awoke. The weather was awful. Patrick was pounding around like a bull with a sore head. His producers tried to persuade him to see the eclipse from somewhere where he would definitely see it, like Turkey or where it would be, but he wanted to see it from England, his own country. I must admit, I'm excited, because I've been looking forward to this eclipse now for the last 70 years. All we need now is for these wretched towels to clear away and give us a nice clear sky. Luckily, the BBC had seen fit to have an aircraft getting pictures from space. On the whole, at the moment, I've had some really rather a gloomy scene, but don't give up yet. One never knows. It could still clear, and there's a slight lightning of the sky over there. And there is the crescent sun, and we've just had our first glimpse of the eclipse. And the cloud is there, it's drifting, and not very long to go now. Oh, clouds, keep away, please. And then there's the eternity, the diamond ring, and there the lovely corona. And that is the sight of a lifetime. From down here, sadly, we are still under total cloud, and we're missing it. That was so sad for Patrick, but it was an awful lot of fun to do because he kind of could see the funny side, even though he was bitterly disappointed. So at least we have been through the last English total solar eclipse of the millennium. Here at my observatory in Sussex, the weather is absolutely perfect. One of the rarest events in the solar system is the transit of Venus across the sun. Now we know the transit is about to start. Nobody has ever seen one before because there hasn't been one in any of our lifetimes. So it really was something rather exciting. There's the inner star, just first contact, a tiny notch, and there's no mistaking it now. This really is a one-off. It will always be one of my greatest memories of Patrick. There, is that the black yes, dot there? Yes, that's it. It. it was a perfect day, beautiful blue sky. As soon as the transit was over, it clouded over. So we had a gift from God, really, that day. And so, from Brighton, where the sky, sky is now completely overcast, good night. Patrick lives on in the minds and the memories of the people that he affected. Patrick's legacy is that he changed a lot of people's lives. And so it's glad to know that Halley is on his way back. The wanderer has returned at last. Good night. Possibly the most generous man I've ever met in my life. I miss Patrick as a friend. Such a kind and beneficent friend um, and an inspiration. What about the 80th anniversary of the Sky at Night program? Will my successor be able to talk to you from a space station or the surface of the moon? Quite possibly. And the one thing we can be quite certain, whatever happens, it's going to be exciting. Good night.